Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and welcome to Spectacular Creed, Colorado. Now, I'll tell you right now, we may be more excited about bringing you this episode than we have any other for quite some time. So stick around. This episode of Grand Adventure is sponsored by The Dirt Pro. Find the campsite that's right for you from over 44,000 listings, either on the web or on their number one ranked mobile app. Try all of the pro features free for 90 days by using the promo code GRANDADVENTURE90. This is Southern Colorado's Upper Rio Grande Valley. Yes, that mighty Rio Grande River. But unlike the stretch that marks the international border between Texas and Mexico that most folks envision, this is the start of the river that originates deep in the Wemenuchi wilderness below the 13,821-foot summit of the Rio Grande Pyramid. From here, the Rio Grande begins its 1,885-mile journey to the Gulf of Mexico first passing through the fertile upper Rio Grande Valley. Not far from the river's headwaters, Kit Carson's brother-in-law, Tom Boggs, joined several other settlers in 1840 to begin ranching at Wagon Wheel Gap, valued by the Ute people for its hot springs. Tourist activities arrived by the mid-1870s, welcoming Easterners and Europeans to experience the American West. The Denver and Rio Grande began transporting these tourists in 1883, with the opening of a depot at Wagon Wheel Gap. In 1890, however, the Upper Rio Grande Valley's fortunes changed dramatically when Nicholas Creed discovered a high-grade silver vein in Willow Creek, above the present-day Creed. Creed was the last silver boom town in Colorado in the 19th century. Mining camps that eventually consolidated at the mouth of Willow Creek Canyon to form the town of Creed quickly swelled to over 10,000 in an area of only 0.6 square miles to provide labor for the Amethyst, Holy Moses, Commodore, Last Chance, and Kentucky Bell Mines, among others. The rail line extended from Wagon Wheel Gap into Willow Creek Canyon by 1891, and by 1892, over a million dollars in silver had been shipped from the mines. With miners came the usual assortment of ill repute, especially as Denver was experiencing a reform movement against gambling clubs and saloons. Bob Ford, the slayer of outlaw Jesse James, opened a dance hall before being shot and killed here, as did the famed Bat Masterson of Dodge City. Following the example of nearby Telluride, which was the first electrified community in the world, the Creed miners installed their own electric system too. Creed today depends on tourism for its survival, but this is still unspoiled Colorado, largely overlooked by most tourists. There are only 850 residents remaining in all of Mineral County today, roughly 300 of whom live in Creed, and the streets essentially shut down once the sun dips behind the Rocky Mountains. There's one small food market here and one gas station. Creed is still, in a word, quaint.
we have to have fun with the little roadside anomaly. The Creed Fork is a 40-foot aluminum sculpture and roadside attraction in Creed, built in 2012. It is the largest fork in the United States, intentionally designed to outmeasure the 35-foot long fork in Springfield, Missouri that previously held the record. We arrived in Creed from our last stop in Pagosa Springs, about 90 minutes away. In between the two lies 10,856 foot Wolf Creek Pass, a challenging drive for our tundra that's already at its towing capacity with our new fifth wheel. For those who may be wondering, the tundra did struggle, but proved its metal grinding up the eight mile, 7% grade to the top. And we eased down the north side of the pass in our lowest gears to minimize the impact upon our brakes. So we're boondocking in the Rio Grande National Forest right along Forest Road 508, just a few short miles west of the center of the town of Creed. This is your typical 14-day stay limit boondocking on National Forest land. And I'm telling you right now, we have been the only folks camping in this entire area all week. This has been unbelievable. We've got 360 degree views from right atop a small knoll. We couldn't ask for any better. So you may be asking yourself, how did we find such a spectacular place to camp? You won't find this spot in any online directory. And we did it with the help of the Dirt Pro. One of the features available on the Dirt only to Pro members are public land map layers. And that lets you see where across this entire country public land is available for camping. And we were able to use the Dirt Pro to spot this area of national forest land within the Grand, uh, Rio Grande National Forest. We then confirmed with the Forest Service that this road was legal to camp along. You've got to camp within 300 feet of the center line of the road. Other than that, you can stay anywhere in this area for up to 14 days. So we did it with the help of the Dirt Pro. Now you can try all the Pro features of the Dirt uh, for free 
including the public land map layers, for a full 90 days. That's half a camping season, so what do you have to lose? Use our promo code GRANDADVENTURE90, which you'll find in the link down below in the video description, and try the Dirt Pro now for free. The hillsides here are littered with the remains of Creed's more prosperous heyday. In fact, this ore chute is only about a mile from our campsite. Most of the mines here closed when the silver panic hit in 1893 and prices plummeted. In 1985, when the price of silver dropped again, the home state mine closed its doors, the last mine in Creed to do so, after continuing to produce silver, gold, lead, zinc, and copper. The home state mine is situated near the beginning of the Bachelor Loop Historic Tour, a 17-mile drive through the historic mining district above Creed. The tour takes you across mine locations from the 1890s and abandoned ghost towns that once rivaled Creed in size. The road weaves its way through the West Willow Creek Canyon north of Creed, climbing steeply beneath the ragged cliff sides. A number of interpretive stops and route points of interest provide direction along the route.
One of the last stops along the tour is the Last Chance Mine. In 1891, after a year of fruitless prospecting, Theodore Renninger was down to his last $5. He decided to have breakfast in Creed one last time and told his friends he was leaving on the evening train. He then went back up the canyon one last time to finish his prospecting. But when his burrow got loose, he went further up the mountain. When he caught up with the burrow, it was standing by a large rock outcrop. Renninger sat on that rock and began to strike it with his hammer and found the apex of the amethyst vein with silver. Because of what he said to his friends at breakfast that morning, see y'all later, this is my last chance to strike a ridge. The name Last Chance Mine stuck. Jack Morris purchased the Last Chance Mine in 1998 and has put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into its preservation, bringing it back to its original condition. Today, Morris offers 40-minute underground tours of the mine for $15, where you can actually see the amethyst vein containing amethyst, sobelly agate, and silver. As luck would have it, we're in town for one of Creed's biggest events of the season. Burrow racing is a sport begun by some of Colorado's 19th century miners. Those hardy characters used burrows to carry mining tools and supplies through the Rocky Mountains as they prospected for valuable ores. Since the burrows were carrying a full load, the miners had to walk, leading the animal with a rope. Legend has it that two miners found gold in the same location and raced each other back to town to be the first to stake a claim to the find. Neither could ride their animal because of its load, so one of the basic rules of burrow racing was established. The Creed Donkey Dash abides by the basic rules of burrow racing as established by the Western Pack Burrow Association. Competitors run the entire 10-mile distance through the mines and mountains above Creed, leading their pack burrow. We're volunteering as an event photographer, which will help the Western Pack Borough Association 
while at the same time capturing terrific footage to share with you. Right back here at the picnic tables, ten dollars a square. Get them while you get to pick them. <laughs> so, are there any questions about the food drop? into the last year and I said, well, it's already been a good day. Let's put on a show. I think we did. So, so Friday, man, you definitely sucked it up there at the last bit. Folks, that last 150 yards will take the life right out of you. You've already gave it all you have on that course, and you're coming in here. The pressure's hot, and uh, it's the, all you got, your jelly legs, your feet. You can't feel anything from the chest down. And then you come across the finish line with this 450-pound beast, and uh, what a great job today, man. So, was it hot? Hot, very hot. Luckily, these guys worked together on the fly because uh, Rob and I couldn't have done it at best. We were worked. So, yeah, we, were, we uh, took it easy in spots to recover because of the heat, but uh, it was just a battle the whole day. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. I love to hear it, man. Well done. Congratulations. You pumped. What do you got to say? I've texted you. Nothing, as usual. apple? Yeah, where's this apple? UConn can have apples, folks. <laughs> all right, well done, folks. That's what Burrow Race is all about. So we really hope that you've enjoyed visiting this really special corner of Colorado called Creed with us. If you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. Also down below, that's where you'll find the comment section where we'd love to hear from you. We air new outdoor adventure travel videos each and every Wednesday. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer, 
this is the time. Go smash that little red subscribe button. The one right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you come along on each and every grand adventure. And we would be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.